Claire and I have just returned from a week in Mykonos and it was honestly incredible. In terms of the camera that I took for the trip, I decided to take just the Fuji X-T4 and a few lenses. I took the 16 to 55, I took the 10 to 22 mil and I took a 23 mil prime. I don't think I ended up using the prime at all all but I only used the zoom lenses which for this channel and my own photography is pretty refreshing because I typically shoot primes or fixed lens cameras like the Leica Q and the X100V so it's actually quite nice to have that flexibility of zoom and it's something that I haven't used for a little while. The town itself then is a series of meandering lanes and this is probably the bit that I enjoyed most. There's white buildings everywhere, there's black cobblestone paving and it's really easy to get lost in this area and that is part of the charm. You can tell that it has become quite commercialized and I think this is reasonably recent. There are some very high-end fashion brands dotted throughout these kind of meandering streets that take away from some of maybe the local feel but it's really easy especially from a photography point of view to kind of block them out and to photograph around them. Every now and then you'll stumble across a bright pink plant I don't know what they're called but they were in full bloom during the time we were there and they add sometimes a much needed kick of color and contrast to your images. A lot of the houses and shop fronts as well have brightly colored doorways and window frames that really add to the feel of your images. There's also something else that's really handy about the bright white buildings and that's during the day where the sun is really bright it just bounces off all of the white buildings and works as a really good fill light for portraits. So weirdly walking down these alleys and these kind of small cobbled streets, you get some really good portraits because people's faces are really well lit from the bright surroundings next to them. Beyond the town itself then, the next big thing is likely the sunsets. An awful lot of Greek islands are known for beautiful sunsets. Where they're all on small islands, you know at some point of that island, you're gonna get a view of the sun just dipping below the horizon behind the sea. We ended up watching most of these sunsets from the main town itself from two different landmarks. Now one of the really famous ones is something called Little Venice. Now this area does feel like it has a little bit of an Instagram versus reality vibe with it because it's pretty busy here. If you come here during the day it's actually quite quiet and you can get some really nice food but in the evening everybody knows that this is the place to be and it can be really busy. However, the good thing is people are generally quite polite here and we found that if you just waited your turn, you ended up getting the exact images you wanted and it looks like there's nobody around. But if I zoom out on that 10 to 22 mil, stick it to 10 mil, you can see how many people there are around. Now just behind you from here is one of the other big landmarks of Mykonos and that is a strip of windmills. Now this used to be a really long strip of windmills, way more than there is today, but there's still a few of them there and they kind of sit up higher than the rest of Mykonos and you can get again some really nice photos up here. On our last couple days we decided to, instead of walking down to the coast where Little Venice and the windmills are, we decided to walk the other direction out of the town and out the back of the town is actually really steep and you can get to a pretty high elevation within kind of walking for about 10 minutes and from up here you get some incredible views of Mykonos town and out to the sea. What also I think is quite funny is where I was using the really wide angle lens for this you can actually take a single image and crop maybe three different images out of each one and they all kind of stand alone as good images. If you take this image for example, you've got one up towards the top of the cruise ship, you've then got another one, maybe a portrait one that includes some of the tops of the buildings down to the right hand side. I spent a lot of time like umming and ahhing with these images on what to do when it came to the crop as I knew they were probably a little bit too wide in their full form. Something else then that Mykonos is very well known for is the beaches. And there's an awful lot of beaches along the south coast of the island and we ended up exploring most of them. However, there is a bit of a kind of culture shock when you go to some of these beaches because a lot of the restaurants will have sun lounges or sunbeds that go all the way from the restaurant all the way down to the seafront. And you have to pay for these sun lounges and they can cost anywhere between say 10 to kind of 50 euros per person. But if you don't want to do that, which we didn't on some days, then the beach choice is very important because some of the beaches have comically small amounts of like free sand, which you don't have to pay to lounge on. Here's a picture of one of the beaches that we went to, and I'll put the name on the screen as well, that literally has a small chunk of sand on the right hand side that you don't have to pay for. Photography wise, I found the beaches to be a little bit awkward, especially with a camera like the Fuji X-T4 because 
In Greece and a lot of European countries, nudity is generally pretty well accepted and walking around with a camera with like a big old lens on the front of it, it did feel a little bit awkward and I wish at some points that I had maybe the X100V that feels a little bit more casual. So I actually found myself putting the X-T4 away quite a lot whilst I was actually walking around the beach. But once you get away from the beach, it's obviously a lot easier and feels a lot more less creepy to be able to take some of these images. On one of the days, we actually decided to walk between the beaches as there's a pretty well-maintained coastal path that you can walk along and you see, I think three or four of the beaches in one walk. The walk only took a couple of hours and it was nice and easy and it offered a bit of a different perspective to what you see a Lot on social media. The other really cool thing about this was it meant you get to explore some of the beaches that don't have bus routes going directly to them, so they're generally a lot quieter. Again though, the downside is quiet beaches generally led to more nudity, which led to me not having the camera out so much, but it was really fun just to walk and meander through the kind of coastal path. If you don't fancy walking, there is another option and we did this on a different day and that is getting a water taxi. There is a fleet of maybe six to eight boats that service each of the southern beaches and they frequently stop off at each one and you can buy a ticket, I think it's 20 euros per person, that lets you hop on and off wherever you'd like. My only word of warning with this is the sea is pretty choppy and the boats are pretty small. If you can't handle the sea and you get seasick, then it might not be the best choice for you. Mykonos is really well connected to some of the other other islands in the area so you can actually take some pretty easy and cheap tours to other islands. Now we decided to do two different ones, we took one trip to Tinos and one to Delos. So starting with Tinos then, this was a tour that was fully guided and when we arrived there at the port we were pointed to a rather odd looking piece of carpet that ran alongside the path and the road. We then jumped in the minibus and took a trip up to a very important church where an awful lot of people in the past would take long journeys to visit. Now what we did notice though was that this carpet went all the way along the path, all the way up the road to the door of the church. Now some people opt to crawl from the bottom to the top. Now the carpet's there to obviously make it a bit nicer for these people, but honestly, it's by no means easy. Now on arrival at the church, it looks pretty incredible and it was really, really quiet, which meant I could get photos without lots of people in them. And they also had basically no restrictions on photography. They actually welcomed at times for us to take photos. Our tour guide was exceptionally good and she was really, really good at explaining all of the different aspects of the church. Like inside, there's lots of things hanging from the ceiling and an awful lot of these are offerings to Virgin Mary as this is who the church was kind of made in name of. After our visit to the church, we then took a trip up to the kind of top of Tinos. Now Tinos used to be a very, very well off island because it has one material in abundance and that is marble. Now, I don't know about you guys, but for me here in the UK, marble is something that is very, very expensive. Some of the marble from Tinos can actually be found in Buckingham Palace. But when you're in an island that has big marble mines and lots of people that are very good at working with it, some things made out of marble because it's super abundant that just nowhere else in the world you'd ever find. For example, a bus stop. This bus stop is fully made out of marble. And the way the light was coming through, because it was kind of sunset sort of time at this point, is incredible. And I've never seen anything like it. And walking around this village, was just more and more of the same. Things made out of marble that you just never expect. Nearly every house had like marble window sills, like window frames, door frames, like steps up to their houses. There's a church in the middle of the village and pretty much the entire top section of the church is made out of marble. And we timed it perfectly with sunset because marble kind of reflects and glows when sun hits it and it led to some really, really good images and just generally a really mind boggling village to visit. Whilst we were there, we also got taken to a kind of workshop where there is a resident marble artist and they actually had people over from France to learn the trade, which I thought was really interesting. And they'd been there for something like eight weeks and was only just finishing their like kind of first sculpture that they'd made. This Tinos trip was honestly one of my highlights of the entire trip and I would highly recommend it and to do the tour because the tour guide was honestly just phenomenal. The second trip that we took then was to an island called Delos. Now, if you're into Greek mythology, this would be right up your street because this is the island that is the birthplace of Apollo. Now for me personally, I don't really know Greek mythology that well and I found it a little bit hard to keep up at times, but if Greek mythology is your kind of thing, this is definitely the island for you. 
However, from a photography point of view, the island is essentially an excavation site. And I think they were kind of describing to us that in Greece, when they do excavations, they're not allowed to rebuild what they dig up. They essentially have to dig it up and leave it where it is. So a lot of the things hadn't been rebuilt. They were kind of just kind of sat next to each other. So really tall pillars would be in multiple pieces rather than being reconstructed. So from a photography point of view, it wasn't that great. I really, really struggled to get some good images, but from an experience point of view, it was a very, very good part of the trip. If you can't tell by this point, we absolutely loved our trip to Mykonos and I would highly recommend it to anyone. If you're thinking about doing a quite a long trip to Greece, then you can also tie it in with other islands like Santorini, which again is a photographer's haven. Something else that surprised me about the trip was how much I enjoyed using the X-T4. Now, the X-T4 is the workhorse camera of this YouTube channel, but it gets next to no screen time as it's always the one recording the videos. The X-T4 spec-wise is my best camera, but I just never use it for photography and having the flexibility of the zooms, being able to record video and photos with one camera, to be honest, was really, really refreshing. And I think it's probably making me want to use the X-T4 for a little bit more photography than maybe I have done in the past. That said, however, I am really looking forward to using the Leica Q a little bit more on the channel as it's pretty new to the channel and I've got a few videos with that camera lined up in the near future. So if you've enjoyed this video and that's something that you'd be interested in, please do not forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions about the trip or Mykonos, feel free to ask them down in the comments or hit me up on Instagram and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.